Welcome to WTF is Web3, where we untangle the uncertainties of Web3 technologies. Be sure to check out the show notes for more information, giveaways, and ways to stay in touch. You're also going to want to make sure that you're subscribed to our podcast, our YouTube channel, and our private group so you don't miss out on exclusive content, freebies, and much more. And we're live. So this is the first time we've gone live, so expect all the uh, mistakes and snafus and whatever they call them and we're going to be discussing what are we discussing john utility nft utility the importance the possibilities and what's what is it good for absolutely nothing that was so cheesy (laughs) well that that is one of the most important things in my opinion for nfts The, the three things i always look for and there are others but the top three things and it doesn't have to have all of these but very important things are brand recognition, community, and utility. So hmm. I think it's very appropriate that we've been talking about NFTs and all sorts of other Web3 stuff, specifically NFTs lately. It's important to dive into some utility some, so some people are able to understand what potential it has, what to look for, and how to assess value when they're speculating their own little NFTs. None of this is financial advice. Unless yeah, not financial saying, advice, not legal advice. I think that's a good little heur- heuristic to think about when trying to figure out if any of these NFT projects make sense. Not everything needs a utility, but if you did a balancing test and something had a really good brand recognition, scarcity, utility, that one of those could make up for the other. So I think that's pretty good. You don't need all of them. I think it's going to be pretty hard to find a project that has all three of those. But if you have one that has a really strong value in one of those three things, all right, I like it. I can roll with that. Mm-hmm. Good one, Casey. Yeah, you know, every once in a while, blind dog finds a bone, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so, and his clocks. So, um, uh, go ahead. What, what's a good utility? Like, what, what do you mean by utilities when you say utility? Because utility can mean a whole lot of different things. Good. Yeah, well, let's specify. So, what does it do? Aside from it being, you know, everyone, when you think of an NFT, you think of like a JPEG, you think of just an image, yeah, even though it can be many more things you could have. Uh, you know, ownership rights to music or whatever else. So the, the utility JPEGs. is JPEGs. what else? Yeah. Everyone thinks of JPEGs. Let's be honest. The utility is what else does it do? Okay. I've got the ownership of this board ape. I've got the ownership of this crypto punk. What else do I get from that? So some examples would be exclusive access to groups, physical locations, um, some utilities. It's, it's, it can be a ticket to a thing, whether that is contact with Gary V, access to one of Gary V's friends. Uh, yeah, through the through the V friends, a lot of people are aware of those NFTs. The utility behind them spans be, across a bunch of things. Access to them, um, Ty Lopez, which John is in the uh, Ty Lopez project. Some of the NFTs give you the ability to play basketball with Ty Lopez. Some give you the ability to have lunch with Ty Lopez. Others give you access to the content and courses on his website. Some give you access to future meetups and conventions and things like that, that he'll be a part of. Recently, I was able to go to an IRL in real life, an art exhibit in Miami because uh, John and I are ownerships of uh, owners of Tunny Money which is an NFT project that Peter Tunney produced. If you're not familiar with who Peter Tunney is, he's a very well-known art. I mean, he's an artist, but he's very well-known in the art community. He's not just an artist, but he's also a a very community-oriented guy. His past includes a lot of very interesting uh, previous lives, one of which was uh, he was a Wall Street trader, which makes it very appropriate that he's doing the tunny money but basically these nfts of money which are his are actually gifs which john likes to pronounce gif, GIF. it's a gif god let's get this right casey his, his are gifts take... in a, a varying amount yes. of denomination but i was able to go to actually the uh, art exhibit is starting today which at the time of us uh, shooting this well we're live april so 1st. The people are watching april 1st this live. 2022 that's that's when his gallery is public but i actually went tuesday free booze free food you got to rub elbows with uh peter tunney himself as well as blake ian who is the gentleman who convinced and facilitated 
the whole NFT project of, uh, you know, Peter Tunney doing the Tunney money. But what else was great about it is it was limited to just NFT holders. So only people who owned Tunney money were able to go to that event. So it was a very sparse normally. And for those of you who are familiar with Miami and the art scene, Wynwood is like the art epicenter of Miami, really like the south east of the u.s it's like new york miami and la no one else really matters atlanta's got some stuff texas has some stuff but let's talk about who matters what are you doing here yeah whatever miami (laughs) new york and la and peter tunney is pretty prolific in not only miami but also new york because that's where he's from he's from uh long island or rhode island i forget one of those islands but in any case winwood is the epicenter of all of this winwood walls is like the 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 iconic meeting place whenever you go down to art basel yeah you, art basel is the big thing it's like the street art spot yeah. you go there it, it's the center of street art probably in the east coast it's the and maybe the us but it's the big spot for art basel when you come to miami where all these street arts are there's these sections they put out there it's this industrial area that was real gritty at a point and now it just has become this mecca for street art, art everywhere basel. and if you're yeah. ever in miami do yourself a favor go to winwood check out winwood walls winwood walls is like peter tunney's home base so that's the most iconic place in the most iconic art space in one of the most iconic art spaces in the entire world. So that is ground zero yeah, cool. for the art center. And I, what I was going to say is like, that's the landmark when I'm at art Basel and I'm trying to meet up with some friends, I'll see that they're at art Basel as well. You're always like, Oh, I'm at Winwood walls or I'm, you know, three blocks North of Winwood walls and, and one block, you know, West. So that's, that's the like spot. The G- yeah. It, yeah. That's, that's the, spot. the spot where I like take people when they come into town that aren't familiar with Miami or even the U S mm-hmm. they go to Miami. They only think of South beach. And I'm like, come on, let's go to Winwood. We'll go there, go to the Winwood walls, check everything out. Some really good food over that way. Q yeah. is probably one of my favorite foods and spots in, in Miami. It's right around the corner. Um, there's really, really good food there, but to, to back up a bit, the, this utility aspect that these NFTs have, they're not like inherent within the NFT. They they come from whoever is the creator, whoever's behind this community of this NFT project. And they use the NFT as a ticket to unlock whatever those features are. That's the utility. So a lot of these projects, they'll have a roadmap ahead of time that will lay out what they foresee that the NFT could serve as to give you access to. But sometimes it just it opens up as the project evolves Mm -hmm. and they create these utility elements to allow people to have a place in this group and community and get more value out of the NFT than even what they thought of initially. So a couple of cool projects that had that in mind. Board Ape, you you mentioned the Board Ape Yacht Club. It's like it's the blue chip. So everyone knows it. It's one of the, the more popular ones. That's one that it's really evolved a utility for their their nft for that that ape with that they were able to have yacht parties that in miami big yacht parties uh warehouse parties that you can go to that was exclusive to the owners of their board apes and so you have it's sometimes a plus one not always a plus one oh really oh wow that is exclusive it is exclusive and this is funny because there there there's an article of one uh, journalist i think it was at verge and he decided to see if he could crash a board ape yacht club party it was a warehouse party how do you and, do uh, he, he it was successful Whoa. but he had a finagle he just reached out to everyone he could think of that would have one and he found somebody whose boss owned one and he talked to the guy into just giving a screenshot of a qr code to give proof and so they're waiting in line it's in new york i think it was during new york nft week and they're at this warehouse party and uh and they get up there and like the bouncer d- couldn't give a shit so he kicks them away they go back, they go, oh, we'll get this. And they just wait in line and they just wave them in. So they end up getting into the party, free booze, free food, like amazing DJ sets. There was great live performances. It was just a blast. And it's just a bunch of bros, essentially, sitting there talking about their their ape, wearing it, repping it. And so that that's an interesting aspect because you just mentioned the, the Tunny event, right? And the utility there was the ticket to get in. Yes. You had the plus one and it was limited to whoever had this NFT and who's ever in the area too, because a lot of times these owners are dispersed throughout the world. They don't have the availability to get to these events. 
So it becomes a really small subset of people that can go to these events. But the utility is, it's only as useful on a blockchain as technology allows it. To some point, you have to like interact with real life people. So you have to like show it to somebody, you have to select it. So there's a real life friction point here. And so I don't know, I want to get your thoughts on this. What do you think that looks like? Because you could just get around it. Like at what point does going in an RSVP and your name down or just showing a screenshot or a QR code, what's the best way to, to be able to like mend that gap and actually use it as a real ticket to get into something, especially for events? Because that's when well, you just like figuratively jump the fence. Yeah, with, with the events, it would have to be, I would say there'd be some kind of a combination with uh, like a two-factor authenticator type of uh, syncing where like at the point where I'm going through the gate, I got to pull up whatever that expiring code is. So I can't just get like, that that gentleman got the screenshot from his friend's boss or whatever else. That's a great example of how it could kind of be scammed. Um, I think these events are still so new that there are a lot of those gaps, but it also takes the awareness where a lot of this information is only going to be disseminated through the private groups. Like this was only really in Discord. So just by you showing up yeah. and knowing that there's a, a, a ton of money event, you know, the security would have probably just waved you in. To be honest, we when we got in, we actually went in through a back door. Um, the security guard didn't know what was going on with the event. At first he stopped us because he knew it was a back door, but he didn't know how to get people in. We tried going in through another place and the uh, lady there told us that it was exit only. And they were trying to get people out of the gallery to get set up for the event. So she pointed us back down to that security guard. And I was like, dude, she just pointed us this way. So it was kind of makeshift. But like that's to be expected. And honestly, any event is going to be like that. Yeah. But I do see in the future, if it was something where like Bored Apes, especially where you only want, because the Bored Apes Society, one thing that people don't appreciate is part of the value of owning the Bored Ape is the exclusive, exclusivity of who you have contact it's with. It's a network. The networking. Because everyone in that VIP that is exclusive to Bored Ape is someone that is even if they're not a multimillionaire, there's someone who's at least financially comfortable enough to hold on to something that is worth a JPEG that is worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. So odds are they're probably an interesting person, probably worth networking in. Yeah. And now you've got all these celebrities who are like aping in and spending yeah. hundreds of thousands you, of dollars. Yeah, they like Snoop Dogg, food. Post Malone, Steph Curry, Steph Curry. Uh, Jimmy Fallon famously like was on there, Kevin Hart. Uh, I heard Neymar. Uh, Neymar. I, I heard one of the Jenners. I don't know if it was Kylie or Kendall. I, I confuse them, but one of them tried to buy a pink board ape from somebody, and he gained a lot of cred in the board ape community by her. She DM'd him, and he blocked her, and <laughs> nice. she would have paid any amount of money for it, and he blocked her for the community. I think it was probably someone who maybe had a few board apes. And he realized that money really wasn't his concern at that point, but getting a little bit more notoriety among the board eight group would probably behoove him. Um, so I think that that was a pretty intelligent play. It was very contentious. A lot of people were uh, debating whether or not he should have done that. And they're like, dude, just take the money. Don't be a jerk. But it's his ape. Yeah. He can do what he wants with it. And you know, th thinking back on my question, I just gave you, if it matters that there's not a, a real technological way to verify that step when you're doing that transition from a fully electronic blockchain based system to this in real life application. I, I don't know if it matters actually, because like board a, for example, you get the full right to that NFT, to that image. You can license it. You can create a derivative of it. You can lease it out. And so as long as it's only used once, so let's say it's a QR code, for example, that you get generated, a unique QR code yeah. per ownership. If that gets used, I guess it doesn't matter if it's, if you're the owner or not. You had the right to that. You could do whatever you want with the utility. You should be able to lease yeah. that out, lend it out, do what you want with that utility. So yeah, it's like a concert that, ticket. If I bought the concert ticket and no, I'm out of town and I give you the concert ticket, you can go to the concert. It's not like we're getting four people into the concert for two tickets. I bought two tickets. I give them to you. You have the access instead of me. If we you know, had, had a money exchange or whatever else, that's irrelevant. Um, so yeah, that, that is a good point. The, the, only, the, the only danger would be if there's not that QR code, if there's not that guest list, if there's not some way to verify that it is one for one entry or one plus the you know plus one entry 
for that. That's where, but I mean, at the end of the yeah. day, it's going to be that's on, far between. Yeah. And, and that's on whoever is throwing the event that they take yeah. care of that. I mean, that's like any ticket. If you just say, show me a photo of it versus let me see the actual barcode of your ticket. That's a savvy event person. Just making sure that's taken care of. But, but I, what's kind of cool with that to other is, utilities I want to discuss as well. Yeah. So we're talking about other <laughs> utilities, um, that ability to lend out a utility, uh, we can talk about other utilities, but let me just jump that's a great, on. I've got some great examples for that, but you go ahead. You yeah. Start. So you mentioned a couple of these NFT projects that I've been a part of. Tony Money is one of them. Um, I did get involved in the Ty Lopez one. There's another one, like a shrimp society. These are really Miami focused ones. And those are some of the reasons I've got involved in them because there was a local utility aspect to it that just intrigued me. It was a connection to the, the Miami community that was available and was just kind of cool. So the Tony Money one's cool. You get that art experience. The Ty Lopez one's interesting because he he created a like a tier system. If you guys know Ty Lopez, he's like a marketing guy. He used to do the- He's got a library in his uh, garage. He's got a library in his, his garage. Next to his he's actually probably gonna be a guest uh, quite frequently on our show. Yeah. He's, yeah. He's, he's made some requests. We're trying to work out a schedule. Um, we've got some other people that are always, they're, they're trying to get interviewed too, but you know, we got a yeah. good chemistry. Try not to break it up with just any riff raff. Riff raff also, the rapper from Tampa, he wants to be on the show as well. Our booker will sort of get through all that once we get some of the stuff we want on our chest. Off I wonder if Riff Raff has some some NFTs. That guy would be sure. perfect for NFTs. I I feel like Tyler Hero would have some really good NFT game as well. Oh, Miami Heat player. So Ty Lopez, his NFT thing that he launched in the last couple of months, I think it was the month month of April or March or February, whenever of 2022. He did this one where he he's trying to purchase a hotel or restaurants and he hasn't been very clear where it was or he plans to do it but some word has been it's going to be in miami which is why i got involved because the nft then serves as access to that club hotel bar whatever it is almost like a, a private club like a soho house really interesting and this is where i, I loop into our previous conversation that we were just having about as a ticket because there's the possibility then to lend out or lease that access. So this is a unique concept where if you have a membership, let's say to a hotel room, almost like a license, you have the license to access those rooms and no one without that, that key can access those rooms. If you want to get more people to be able to get to this hotel, you have to then license out your license. You lend that out. So you lease it. So there's a potential marketplace for your utility that you have to people that don't have access to that utility. And so you a, still retain the the, uh, the NFT itself. If it's a cool art, you still get the art, but you can license out aspects of that utility, which is pretty darn neat. And there's a, there's a project that this segues perfectly into. I've been spending a lot of time in the metaverse between John and I, I'm kind of like the, the, you know, the, the in-house metaverse nerd, Meta specifically nerd. Decentraland, spending a lot of time there. We're about a little bit more than halfway, I think, through the first ever Metaverse Fashion Week, and that's being hosted in Decentraland. So there's a ton of brands. We're, we're going to have to do another episode on that. I did one previously, kind of doing a quick update, a solo sode. But Decentraland has a, it's like a chain of casinos. I think they have five or probably four or five casinos in Decentraland that are owned by Decentralized or Decentral Games. And they've got a cryptocurrency. Um, they also, in their casinos, they will do free play and they do free play tournaments. And you can win prizes without spending any money. You can win NFTs and all sorts and, and cryptocurrency prizes based on how you perform in the casino. And they'll have poker tournaments, blackjack tournaments, just everyday random slot machines and all that other stuff that you could be playing. And they'll do tournaments that are exclusive to people who are wearing their wearables. Their wearables, the Decentraland game wearables, have gone up in price so much because that allows you to play in the casino for free. You play for free. You win free stuff that people are investing in these wearables because there is a huge market for people who are renting or leasing those wearables from you in order to play the game. So example, bringing it back, let's say I own one of Decentral Games wearables 
and I lease it to you. There's actually a specific instance where there's a gentleman who's in the state. He owns a wearable. He rents it out and they have through the discord, you're able to align with someone who has it, someone who wants it. You come up with either paying for it up front or they get a percentage of your winnings. And there's a gentleman, I believe, in Venezuela who has been borrowing his wearable for a percentage of his winnings. And this kid is generating real money. He says he's making more money playing the games and doing the gambling. And again, you start off with free money. So you're just winning prizes. So he's risking no money. He just gives him a share of his winnings. And the kid says he's making more money in a week than he'd be able to make full time in a month. And he's going to school. And again, I think it's Venezuela, somewhere in South America. He's going to school as a college student. So this is great for his schedule. He's able to you know, log in and play whenever he wants. He's kicking back money to the guy who owns the wearable. So that guy's making a healthy ROI on that investment in that, in that wearable. And then he is also able to help his mother and his family pay for bills. And I watched a YouTube episode where this guy is, you know, explaining the situation that he set up. And it's very interesting because not only is this guy able to make some money, but imagine maybe if you or I were to play poker and we win, you know, $500 a month in prizes, it's not worth us playing full time. But if you're in another country, it's definitely worth it. And if I spent a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars on this NFT, and I'm getting a uh, fifty percent of those winnings, and I'm leasing it out to the same guy every month, and I'm making two fifty every month or whatever the number. Don't stick to the numbers, but I'm able to make this ROI just by holding this NFT. They're also so limited that they're appreciating rapidly. And the bigger this casino grows, the bigger the brand grows, the more awareness there is, the more sought after these NFT wearables are going to be. And the community is very strict around this one specifically. You have to be a holder of like at least a thousand ice, which is their token. And right now ice is trading, I think over a dollar. So it's over a thousand dollars that you have to have staked just to be on the white list. And it's not even a white list. I think it's just for you to be able to buy their NFT at all. You have to have over a, a, a thousand of their ice staked. And then I think there's another tier of like 10,000, but whatever. So you have to be invested in the com company holding their token, which creates value and stability in their token just to be able to buy their NFT. And they said, I was reading their NFTs are selling out in minutes and their NFTs have gone from like a quarter of an Ethereum to the more recent ones have been in Ethereum. So even with that high dollar amount, they're so sought after that they're being sold out so quickly because again, the utility behind it is you have exclusive access to these casinos and these free plays and these competitions, or there's so much value in it now that just the amount of people who are playing casino games in Decentraland, they're willing to rent it from you or split the profits from their winnings. So that's, like I said, perfect segue into uh, to that utility because it's, it's kind of like what he was saying. I might not be near Miami. I don't need the access to the hotel, but you might. So there might be in the future with Ty Lopez, people through the discord who are going to be able to meet up and say, Hey, I'm going to Miami. Who wants to, uh, you know, let me borrow their thing and get some answers, some responses, facilitate some kind of an exchange. And, uh, you know, one hand washes the other. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's really cool. Th there's one thing that I just learned about. I don't know if you're familiar with it. Steppen. Have you heard of Steppen? The GMT. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I shorted it and just got my dick kicked in. Well, that's that's the currency for it. But step in what it is, yeah. is um, an NFT sneaker that rewards you for walking or running or just covering ground. And it covers you with the native currency. And you can lease out that sneaker as well to other people to like use and earn and everything like that. So it's just another way showing this example of lending, leasing, whatever it is that you have. Yeah, it's, um, that, it's on a I think that was pretty right cool though. I, I saw it go from like 80 cents to a dollar six. And I was like, oh, it's, it's, I, I'm going to short this. So I started shorting it at a dollar six. And now it's like, I last saw it at like 320. Like I, I lost so much money on that. Like, it's, yeah. 
Well, you don't you short. Don't play with margin. It's actually underlying it. So what's underlying is stepping. It's it's a really cool. It's an application essentially, but it has well the, the, the original you... investors. Their their um release date is coming up. Yeah, I think like April eighth. So the speculation is a lot of them are going to be dumping their shares on the market and crashing the price. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna start shorting it. And when it went up like. 35% or something in one day. I was like, okay, let's say it'll fall back to 20%. Let me short it from 35 to 20. It just ripped. It's gone up over 300% and I lost a lot of money. Well, I, I know it's- uh, I had no idea what the project was. I just yeah, saw how far that's the it problem. went up. So, so the, the, the product's pretty cool. Like I, I've seen people that are making 50 bucks just doing a 20 minute run and they're, they're running to earn, just like play to earn. This is a usage to earn. And then they're getting rewarded for that. So they're working to make their their funds back. They invested in the sneaker because you have to buy the sneaker NFT. And you use it and you move and you get a reward. I'm and gonna have to look can... into that. What happens if I just like drive my car really slow? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I haven't actually looked into it that much. I just became aware of this and started to get some curiosity. Uh, I think it's about a thousand bucks, maybe like I think it's 10 Solana is the price for one of the sneakers you know just a proposal let's let's uh you know we've been talking about creating a dow let's have our dow buy one of these coins we all share it and contribute it and we just run throughout the day and it's just like man there's like 23 hours of activity this, i'll buy one of the sneakers yeah. this one this one's a, a, a beast <laughs> this guy's just, a maniac all of us just going crazy on it just speed walking around We'll just like hand it like a virtual baton. It's like, all right, I'm done. So if you're interested in finding loopholes, scams, or playing in the gray. <laughs> this guy, a Kenyan our... or an Ethiopian? He is just running nonstop. That's an interesting <laughs> one. I didn't realize. I knew it had something to do with working out. I didn't know there was like an NFT sneaker thing. Yeah, it's NFT. really cool. It's I was really... so anti-NFT not too long ago, and now I'm like balls to the walls NFT. It, it's really cool. So, so this is just some examples of the utilities that you have. And we mentioned Board A, if I know we keep harping on it, it's just one of the biggest well-known projects. So one of their unique, we can call it a utility, it's a feature. And that's really what a utility is. It's a feature outside of what you see. What you see is the photo, that's cool. You have a community, that's cool. But anything outside of that is a utility. And so one utility- It's a, it's a perk, it's a function, it's a perk. utility. Yeah. Yeah. It's whatever it unlocks, it's a key card. And so it's yeah. utility. I mean, it's the best word for it. Mm -hmm. One cool utility that board apes have um, is that you get the full license. And so that's not something that's super common or at least universal for all these NFTs. For a lot of them, the artists retain a lot of the IP. Yeah. So you can't for, put it in your branding. I mean, you can't put it in, you can't make a shirt of it and sell it. But with Bored Apes, you can. You, and you one can. thing I'll, I'll mention is Peter Tunney and Blake Ian, as I mentioned before, they're both ape owners. So Peter Tunney actually has some of the work that he's been doing for years. So his older work, and now he's got this new kind of NFT stuff. He combined it and his older work is like these stencils of like the time is always now or no time like the present or whatever, like very simple but impactful phrases. And he's got within that stencil work, he now has his board ape in there. So he's got his ape in a combination of his older throwback kind of work. And I, I saw that piece and I was like, man, that's like if there was a one Peter Tunney work that i'd want to own and hang on my wall among all of them but if i could only pick one if i could afford them maybe i will if i pick the right nfts it'd be that one because it's like so poetic poetic yeah yeah that's but pretty cool pretty cool going back to the, the licensing in the right from what i understand some of the board apes have the board ape logo within them and if you own a board ape with the board ape logo you're able to use the board ape logo otherwise you don't have rights to it you only have rights to the image so you have rights to whatever is in the that you own. Okay. You can replicate that. You can license it. You can do derivatives, which basically mean like iterations. You can do little tweaks to it. And it's not just for personal use. They allow you to do it for commercial use as well. So you don't just have to make a t-shirt for yourself. You could sell an entire line of t-shirts. You're seeing a lot of people that are licensing their ape uh, for weed. Weed brands is like one of the first uses for it. They just go in and slap it on there and it'd be like hypnotic sugar or something like that. And it would be associated with that ape. And that became the brand. They're putting on beer cans. Um, oh, I'm seeing I saw all over Miami. There's like uh, like shoe stores, like, you know, high end um, kind of 
shoe head, sneaker head kind of shoe stores, like the fancy limited edition stuff. That's all they had right in Wynwood. And they had the board apes. I'm like, I'm guessing the owner of that shoe store is a board ape guy. And I don't know if you saw this, but there's a Did board ape fast food restaurant. I think it just started in California. And now you're going to have a bunch of apes and NFT fans specifically diverting their, their little uh, journeys and making special trips to go to this board ape franchise. I feel like yeah. board ape is so big they can't fail. We should probably talk about their metaverse as well and their coin. Yeah, those are utilities. Yeah. There's a lot there. We'll probably just do an episode on. Yeah, that. we'll do an That's episode specific. on that. I, as much as I, I'm, I'm jealous because I'm not in it. So I, I would love for them to fail, but I know they won't fail if I can oh, get no, my hands on a board ape. You never want anything to fail either. Like always, always root for success for everyone else. It's yes, not yeah. zero stop. It's not like one yeah, goes I didn't down say that. Cut that. Cut that. Cut that. Cut that. Oh, cut, that, that, that cut that. Cut that. Cut that. Cut that. So those are cool utilities, and that's part of the reason that that board ape really jumped off really fast because that was fairly unique when they launched. They uh, they had that aspect. It let everyone just use that, and that was utility. Like another some utility. Other, has some other projects that you're in based on the utility. Yeah. So like I mentioned, I, I really like the geographically focused ones, ones that give you in real life chances and experiences. So the, the Peter Tani is one, the Ty Lopez is one. I mentioned the shrimp one. There's another one that, that my wife is actually involved in called Tuttle Tribe. It's uh, another Miami focused one, but it's a women focused one. So it's based on Julia Tuttle, who was like one of the, the founding mother women of Miami. And so it's based she on her. Miami. She birthed it. it just, yeah. just birthed it. And the membership then, if you have the NFT, it gives you access to these like women empowerment, women in web three, uh, virtual educational events, conference tickets, like boot camps, academies. And they also help support each other with jobs, working in Miami, all these cool things. So like, that's just a, a cool utility that, that she has. And it's a very women focused one as well. You know, uh, with those, a, a lot of times too, just real quick in Miami, all these events, and we mentioned the NFT week, you have like crypto week, a lot of these communities, your thing works as a key to some of these like parties and events and secrets rooms and houses and after parties. So that's a utility that's very common for a lot of these, these projects. What were you going to say, Casey? Well, it, it's funny that you mentioned a lot of those things were related. So at the Peter Tunney event, uh, we were speaking with a uh, woman named Joyce, and I don't know exactly what she does. She said that she's in the NFT space, and she's kind of doing a lot of research. She does own a lot of NFTs. She owns a Beeple. Um, but one thing that she mentioned is not only is she a, uh, also a, a promoter or a, a supporter, I should say, of women-focused and women-run uh, themed whatever NFT projects, but we are also getting into the conversation, which I thought was interesting and it gave me a new perspective because um, she said that she felt NFTs are a very local kind. They have a very local kind of value. And when I first got into NFTs and POAPs, my big struggle was trying to make it a local thing because i always like hope helping local businesses i'm you know local business owner very much in the community i've got a, a lot of friends who own restaurants and gyms and all sorts of other local businesses so they don't care about attracting you know uh, an audience from dubai or california or anywhere else they gotta you know have someone within their radius they got a physical building here if i got a restaurant that's only in boca i don't care about having an audience in zimbabwe i want to have people here and that was one of the things that I found was difficult for helping restaurants locally adopt or see the value in adopting NFTs is because it's largely like a global type of attraction or audience that you're going to have. And she was arguing that her perspective was that it's very local. So what I'm seeing now is I think eventually a, a lot of the best use cases are going to be not all of them, but I think a lot of amazing use cases are going to be for local businesses, the reason it's not there yet is simply because of adoption. Because imagine you being a supporter of a local restaurant and as a thank you for you being a patron the first month, they give you an NFT that gives you a locked in price for appetizers or a free appetizer once a month or something like that because you supported them or a local restaurant group or a local gym. We, we've discussed DAOs and um, 
PO apps and NFTs and other applications for local businesses. But I think that's where this is definitely going to go. Not to say that you can't have like a Ty Lopez type of thing that is attracting people worldwide, but then we'll bring it back to the fact that he's, even though he has the ambition to buy multiple hotels and clubs and whatever else, it's going to, they're all going to be local. You know, if you're not in Miami, you don't take a trip to Miami. There's a limitation on that value that that NFT would have. You wouldn't be interested in that one. And if you don't care about having access to his core courses or playing basketball with him or whatever the other NFTs are, now you're not a supporter of that project. Whereas, like I said, once it becomes a more comfortable and ubiquitous thing, phenomena, whatever, I, we're going to see a lot more NFTs and cryptocurrency and blockchain technologies, Web3 stuff in general, saturate local markets. Right now, it's just too far, few and far between. Yeah. And, and it doesn't What are your thoughts on that? Where do you think it is locally? Because I know you're specifically, you're looking specifically for the local value. So, so I, I, I appreciate the local value. So I think I will value something greater than the majority of people do because of that local value. Not everything is based on a speculation, should be based on, is it going to go to the moon? Will this be the next board ape? Will this be the next crypto punks? Some things can be valuable based on what it is that they help you unlock. If it's a network, if it's an experience, if it's uh, an educational opportunity, that value to me is, is worth NFTs a lot of the time. Sometimes it's not, but a lot of times it is. And so a lot of that is a local-based thing, but it doesn't have to be. Some of the stuff can be global, um, reachable events. So you can have web events. You can have interactive educational exposures. You can also have some big franchises that have in real life locations, but on a global scale. Yeah. So private clubs are a great example. The Soho House, which I mentioned is something that Ty Lopez thought that he could, he could create an NFT version of Soho House. If Replicated. Soho House made their membership an NFT and the utility was the admissions to it, that's a great thing because then it's tradable. You don't have to worry about getting locked into something, being stuck and not using it. If you don't use it, you can sell it and there's a market for it. And chances are the value, at least in the way this market's been, you're going to get more value than you would have otherwise. So there may even be an appreciation to it. So you have an asset instead of a service that you paid for and you may not use. So I think that's a really cool way to look at it for whatever these national things, hotels, like we mentioned, Ty Lopez is trying to do this with a hotel, but imagine Hilton doing that or Marriott. Instead of having a Marriott Bonvoy account, you had a Marriott Bonvoy NFT. And that gave you uh, kind of like a timeshare. That gave you exclusive access to like 100 days of hotels for the year. And you got to use that whenever you want across the world. Like that could unlock and it doesn't have to be restricted to a local geography. I think just right now we've talked about skeuomorphic. This is how we're applying it. We're like, all right, like we know, we know private events, we know tickets. Let's sort of treat it like a ticket. And so this is the first iteration of this utility aspect of it. But utility just means you're using it for something other than just looking at it. Yeah. And, and we've talked about tons of cool business ideas that an NFT can serve um, <laughs> beyond just looking at it. Yeah. That's the beauty of it. It could be a pass. It could be a ticket in line. Like we talked about the queue system. We could do an episode on that one time. It, it, could, it, it could make you money. And that's, I mean... Thinking of someone who's not living near a major city, you, you don't live near New York or Miami or Dallas. You live out in, you know, Poughkeepsie or even New Brunswick. I can't. Yeah. The, some place where there's not a lot going on. You obviously wouldn't be as keen on investing in these other projects. But as John mentioned before, with the Internet, there are plenty of other uh, projects with utilities that will have value. Uh, going back to the metaverse everyone with metaverse. an internet connection has access to the metaverse you could buy decentraland or sandbox related nfts that give you access there even if you're not interested in it if you are speculating that someone else is going to have interest in it or see value in it you could rent it out to them you could resell it to them another project i'm i'm very interested in for a few reasons i like their artwork i like the community and i like the utility is the holy ones they've got uh, very focused on decentral land from the aspect of aside from their NFT as an owner of the NFT, you get a wearable that is a skin to wear in decentral land. They also do a bunch of wearable drops. They are part of a casino as well in decentral land. You get 20% of the profit from that casino, but also the community is a lot of fun because it's a, a bunch of very sarcastic, but still friendly and 
um, very supportive people, but it's very sarcastic. And I think naturally because of the artwork of the NFTs, the NFTs are all gods and demigods. It's Jesus, Moses, uh, Vishnu and Buddha. And then it has a myriad of different combinations of what they're wearing. There's albino figures, there's purple hats, there's glasses, different tattoos and stuff like that. So it's sacrilegious. It's probably going to upset some people, but that naturally attracts a certain type of crowd with a certain type of humor, which I think is uh, a little bit more, I don't want to say vetting, but it kind of, it makes sure that the other it doesn't make sure, but it kind of lets you feel more assured that the people in that community have a similar sense of humor. If that's the type of stuff that's attracting you. Yeah, that's a cool one. Um, doodles, I think had a, uh, an application to be avatars for some, some metaverse things. I mean, the metaverse in general are cool utilities. So you mentioned yes. the central land, like you can buy the land that has a utility. Mm -hmm. You can buy the, the, a, a a little block in sandbox that has you. You can resell it. You can you can lease it out. There's people doing events, as I mentioned, Metaverse Fashion Week. There's venues that are hosting Gucci or whoever else. They're Gucci, or whoever it is, isn't buying. They just want that central location in this area in Decentraland that is known as like a fashion hub, and it was pre-designed to be that. So it's just like a mall. They don't own that space in the mall, but they're renting it because the people who are looking to buy Gucci and Chanel and Louis Vuitton are going to be in that area. So they're going to rent that space. So for Decentraland, uh, Metaverse Fashion Week, it was very interesting to see what big brands are adopting it. You mentioned before on, on a uh, one of the podcasts we did, JP Morgan is in Decentraland. I found their location. I wasn't looking for it, but I stumbled upon it. They've got a tiger. They got a Bengal tiger walking around. And JP Morgan is in Decentraland. And that's one thing that I brought up. And this is in one of the podcast videos. The metaverse is being adopted faster than cryptocurrency was adopted. Jamie Diamond. Uh, Jamie Diamond. <laughs> Jamie Diamond. That's gotta. That's gonna be my new Twitter handle. <laughs> Jamie. Jamie Diamond was very critical Jamie of Bitcoin Diamond. just a few years ago, saying that it was going to zero. And yeah, now JP famously. Morgan has a location in Decentraland. Why? Because the eyeballs are there. And that's why they're going to be attracted to it. These brands are attracted to it faster than cryptocurrency because there's not really eyeballs associated with cryptocurrency unless you create your own or you are known for investing heavily in it. But there's so many of them that you're only going to be getting the attraction of people who are interested in that one. Whereas Decentraland has a myriad of different people of ages and coming from all different areas. So there is a good uh, awareness eyeball value to be there, even though you don't want to create a business that's around NFTs and metaverse kind of projects, getting people who see that you've got that involvement in that community. There's a law firm as well. I mentioned to John, they've got a bunch of artwork and NFTs. They also do law related to cryptocurrency, NFTs and metaverse, so of course. They've got a big, impressive plot of land in Decentraland. They had to buy that from somebody, or maybe they're renting it from somebody. I don't know yet. But having that presence in the metaverse and having involvement in NFT and cryptocurrency, you're going to see that coming to uh, businesses that you don't think. One example I always give is you if you went back into the 90s and you're, you're talking about a plumber having a website, it would seem like a weird thing. Be like, why would a plumber have a website? What's he got on the website? He's not writing blogs about plumbing. Now... If I were to tell you, you had to pick between having a website or a phone number for your business, you'd probably pick a website, regardless of what business you have. Dead air. Dead air. Was that a question for me? That was a statement. We're still going. You just stopped to take a sip. I think, I think, uh, I think that's a good point to wrap it up. We've been, uh, been live for coming up on 40, 45 minutes pretty soon. So thanks for uh, watching. I saw some people tune in and tune out. Didn't get any comments, but that's cool. Put this It'll up come. on the podcast. If you're listening yeah. on the podcast, this is a reason to follow us on YouTube. We're building the audience. So we weren't expecting people. This is no announcement, no warning, just the middle of the day went live, but we can't go live on podcasts. We can go live on YouTube. So if you want to chime in, get your questions answered or uh, correct us with your opinion, You'd only be able to do so do so by following WTF is Web3 on YouTube. Links to that will be in the show notes. If you're already on YouTube, please make sure you're subscribing while you're here. Likewise for podcasts. We're on TikTok. We're on Instagram. We're into Central Land. 
not with the physical space, but we're getting there. And uh, yeah, we'll get something. Say, say goodbye, John. See you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I want to make sure you don't forget to check out the information and the links in the show notes. Some of that stuff is going to get you into freebies and raffles and contests and all sorts of other promotions. But also, we've got a private group dedicated to our listeners and our followers. We would love to see you there. Love to see you collaborate, join, and get exclusive content that we are only distributing through these other means. Speaking of distributing through other means, I want to make sure that you're also subscribed to our podcast, our YouTube channel, and again, join that private group so you know everything that we know as soon as we know it. 